Welcome back to Limitless, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today we're going to be working on some drive shaft adapters, as well as revealing the sketch I completed for the build. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So now I can weld this one up inside and out and then start cutting away more material, lighten it up and make it the proper size for my drive shaft. And yay, I get to do it all over again. It's not, uh, not horrible. Okay, I gotta let my welder cool down before I can weld the other one. That's pretty hot for the size torch I'm using, so come right back. So next thing I gotta do is weld this sleeve inside of there because I needed a smaller ID. And I'm out of gas for my torch, so I get to use a little butane torch. At least to try and heat it up a little bit. It's pretty cold steel right now. Every one of the welds on the inside here is cracked right across the weld. And I'm not sure why. Uh, 
I'm guessing it's because this is, you know, not just a mild steel. I don't know what it is made of. It is magnetic, but other than that, I have no idea. All right, so I ran to the store, grabbed some, what do they call it, silicone, silicone bronze, silicone bronze. Never used it before, so <laughs> let's see how this goes. Also got some smaller tungsten as well, so I can get in the gap a little better. But that's the smallest rod they have, which is quite big for this. And why the one side welded up fine, but this side won't. I I don't get it. There's no cracks or anything on this side. And now I got this massive ugliness on the inside. <laughs> It's making a lot of noise, but I haven't seen a single crack surface in this filler rod. That torch is getting damn hot though. Yeah, the torch is getting quite hot. Alright, so I've finally got everything done for this side. Um, so I'll do a walkthrough of what exactly is going to be happening. So because they're, this shaft coming off the transmission is about five inches away from the bearing. Uh, I took the original coupler, machined it down to fit a specific diameter I need. I push that in as far as it'll go and I take uh, what used to be a piece of the torque tube machined off, machined in a bearing. Well, I was trying to find a soft mallet, but I can't seem to find it. Might have to do with the bolts. Okay, so I had to do a bit of machine work on this. Uh, my next piece that goes on was a little bit too tight so it was squeezing it together too much to put it onto the shaft so I got this just tapped in with those uh, two dowels there that you saw um, this is put all the way in right now what I need to do is take my CV adapter and you can see that I've got a uh, C-clip groove See that uh, there's a c-clip groove in there to hold it in obviously I would have to slide it onto this piece put the c-clip on and then bolt it together but for my first try I have to get it all the way in place and measure my distance to there the inner sleeve so that I can weld that on the bench. Okay, and that's really, really close to where I measured it, so let's see where it's actually at. So now, when I pull it all apart, I can weld that inner sleeve to this hub, to the adapter, and just make sure I'm set to that depth, maybe a mil or two short of that as well.
So I just got to set the depth to there. And then I can put a bead around here and on the inside. And likely what I'm going to do is drill a hole through here and put in a roll pin. But, actually that would have to go all the way up into this uh, black area in order to clear the shaft. Alright, so everything's cooled off, so we can do an assembly now. I've got my outer ring with the bearing. Get this piece all welded up. Alright, got my snap ring pliers. So oh, there we go. Now, still gotta clean these out, CV shafts. But essentially, that's gonna. side done, which slides into that, and can tilt how I need it and make myself a drive shaft. So I did both of these, both sides of this thing, um, they're all welded up. Hopefully they are strong enough. Now these sleeve into my drive shaft, uh, the tube itself, the three and a half inch tube, which is rated at the right RPM for what I need. Um, I am waiting. I'm waiting on the transmission shaft, the heavy duty output shaft for the bike engine for the Fusa. Um, but basically this piece will get pressed onto here, welded on inside and out, um, obviously cut off flush. Then I'm going to bore the inside of this out uh, to go over that output shaft and have the sprocket welded, you know, inside of there basically. But I needed to make this thicker because I'm going to be taking a lot of this out. Um, because obviously I don't want the sprocket too small, but it is a 24 mil, I think, uh, outside diameter. So the inside of the sprocket is gonna be 24 mil. So I gotta go, you know, a fair bit bigger than that, at least uh, probably 40 mil. And then that can be pressed in after this is welded up. And yeah, weld the sprocket on and then I can do both sides are done and yeah it's been a, been a long long couple of weeks getting that done in between other stuff okay so I've cleaned up the uh, the one CD joint here stripped it right down cleaned out all the gunk um, just so you guys can kind of get an idea of what this looks like Okay, so there you go. Now I got one CV here up to a three and a half. 
and nothing on the other side so so I hope you guys can kind of tell how I did that there um, made that bearing flange set and had a c-clip on the inside so once you slid it together you put the c-clip on so the bearing is held in place uh, then the entire assembly is held onto the rear transaxle by the uh, four bolts on the flange. I <clears throat> uh, can't show you the front yet because that'll be for the next couple of videos. Uh, I've been working on the intake and radiator assembly. Um, until I get to the other side done for this. Uh, waiting on parts as usual. I've got tons of parts, but I'm always waiting on something stupid and something small. So once I have the front one done here, I'll be able to angle down my rear transmission in order to, you know, minimize the angles on the CV shafts. Um, another thing I think you guys would enjoy seeing is uh, I got a sketch done for kind of how I picture the end product uh, so I'll put that up now and you guys should be able to see I use the actual style of wheels that I'm going with pretty limited for options I'm stuck with a 16 inch uh, a 16 inch wheel pretty much guaranteed uh, I can't quite fit a 15 inch and I need a 22 inch overall diameter um, on the tires uh, in the sketch you can see it looks like the back sticks out further than the front uh, you know I'm not the greatest artist so in reality they'll both be the same I might put the back out an inch further I haven't decided yet probably gonna keep it both both at the same width all right, well, thank you guys for joining me again. Uh, sorry it took so long. I like to post videos when I've got a, you know, a project kind of done. Uh, I think I'm gonna change that up and start doing just, uh, you know, maybe progress over the week, something like that. And then uh, you guys will get more content and hopefully we can get some more subscribers coming in as well. Um, I know we're getting close to a thousand here and when we do hit a thousand I'm gonna do some type of giveaway probably based on comments or something like that because only 3% of you guys are subscribed so I know that we can get some more viewers some more subscribers pretty easily all you got to do is hit that button and get some notifications when I post another one um, so thank you guys for joining me and stick around for the next one. It'll probably be, it's either going to be the rat or the intake. I'm not sure yet.